The Holy Spirit never ceases to amaze me. The Spirit always puts people in my life unexpectedly at the right time and in the right place. Six years ago, when I was on sabbatical and spent a week on Holy Island, the island of Lindisfarne, which is a very sacred, thin space. While I was there on retreat, I was actually, you know, quite lonely. I mean, Carrie was stuck here. I was there on my own. And so I did what any good Episcopal priest did at night, and I went to the pub. <laughs> but I went to the pub where the locals went. Because that's what I wanted to, to talk to, not the tourists, but, but the locals. And, and while I was there, the first night, I met Sheila and her new boyfriend, Paul, who were both working on Holy Island. And, and we, the two of us, the three of us, just clicked. And Sheila was saying, oh, the next day you have to meet my son. And his ex-wife were coming up uh, to spend a few days there. And, that night was one of those nights that just changed my life. When I got to the bar, ordered my pint, there was Sheila and Paul, and here comes Sheila's son, Adam. Adam's 10 years younger than me. Uh, but Adam is one of those so serious and loving individuals that you just want to have a conversation with. Uh, deep, caring heart. But Adam, the one thing that surprises me about this friendship and him more than anything else is Adam is an avowed atheist. Avowed. And I've had the privilege of being in Newcastle upon Tyne where he lives a, a couple times and a year and a half ago Carrie and I went over for he and his new wife Vicky's wedding and I, I got to say a few words and, and bless them. And just two weeks ago, Adam came here to the United States for the first time. Now if you had a chance to talk to him, it might be hard to understand him because he speaks the dialect called Geordie. Uh, think of Jersey Shore at its worst. <laughs> but uh, he was here and he wanted, he came in because he wanted to come and see New York. It was his dream. He wanted to uh, see us. But he snagged a ticket to go see Pearl Jam at Madison Square Garden. And that was his highlight. But he wanted to come and worship with us on that Sunday morning, even though he is an atheist. Now, He'll be seeing this, and so I warn Adam that I'm going to be talking about him, so he, he knows this. Now, the most amazing thing that happened, for, remember, Adam's an atheist, doesn't go to church. Of course, we'll go to church sometimes, you know, what, if there's a wedding, you know, a funeral, a, a baptism, but does not have the habit, or why would he, of getting up on a Sunday morning and going uh, to worship? But he really wanted to be here, because he wanted to meet you. And after the service, I had to take him, it was all about the train time, take him in the car down to the Long Island Rural so he could get into the city, get into his hotel for one night to get ready for Pearl Jam. <laughs> and in that short ride, from here to the Long Island Rural, Adam said something that I completely sort of take for granted. I think you probably take for granted it too. And he, and he said, I couldn't believe your church. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He said, everyone was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> but I understood what he was saying. And I've been in churches in England and you know, they say Anglicans and Episcopalians are sometimes the chosen and frozen. <laughs> uh, and, 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 you know, in, in England, 
stiff upper lip, and I mean, I get that. But it's also true, I've been in many Episcopal churches where you walk in and it, it feels like it's doom and gloom. Heaven forbid you smile at the altar, or smile while you're giving communion, or, or smile while you're talking to somebody else. The view was that worshiping God is a sacred activity, which it is, but worshiping God is also a joyful activity. The first act of prayer is praise, <coughs> and praise is a joyous thing. You know, we get that praise and that joy because we have a gift. And that gift was given to the apostles on Pentecost, the 50th day of after Easter, when they were gathered and were told by Luke Acts, the writer who wrote both of them, that the Spirit came down like a rushing, rushing wind, got everyone's uh, attention, and then the apostles had what they describe as flames of tongue of fire going from their head. And everyone who was there could understand what they were saying, even though, as you heard Kathy read, they were from all these different places. They were, quote unquote, speaking in tongues, but speaking in tongues in a way that everyone understood. But people were so perplexed they thought, and rightly so, that Peter and the guys were drunk at 9 a.m. in the morning. Now, I, it's 5 o'clock somewhere, <laughs> but I, I don't think that Peter was necessarily drunk, especially it would have been a working day uh, for him on, on, on that day, nor were the disciples. But see, that's what the Holy Spirit does. When the Holy Spirit is given to us, which the Holy Spirit was given to the church, they is the birthday of the church. And in our baptism, you and I are marked by the Holy Spirit and claimed as Christ's own forever. And we are given different charisms, different abilities, different gifts to go and use that spirit to spread the good news of God through Christ. And the thing that's amazing is if we listen to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to put us in places at times with people who we might never have met and have the opportunity to share that love with them. You know, today's Pentecost. It's a, it's a day to rejoice. It's a day to wear red. It's lots of, lots of red. But, you know, it's not a day, though, to remain here. Pentecost is the day that we need to leave here and really go. To go and spread that wonderful news that we know that God loves us. That we have a responsibility through words and actions to care for other people. And when they look at us, they will see Christ in us. I give, I'm going to give you one challenge, just one, one. Very easy. Tomorrow, whether it be in the workplace, whether it be in school, whether it be at home, I can probably guarantee you will be having a conversation with somebody who did not go to church today. I can guarantee it. And so let's just say, for instance, you have a phone call with your, your girlfriend. So, so for instance, uh, Nancy. Do you mind, mind calling me? Hello. Oh, Nancy, oh, you, oh, sorry. No, uh, <laughs> no, no, just try this again. Hey. Hello. Hey, Nancy, how's it going? Pretty good today. How are you? I'm great. Hey, did you do anything fun yesterday? Yes. What? 
I don't, I don't remember. You don't remember? <laughs> well, you know, I, I got something really fun, Nancy. I, I said, you know what? I did, uh, you know, our church was so I went to church. You know, I go to this this, this church uh, in Wontaw, and, and you know what? It was, it was amazing. I walked in, and there were these red balloons everywhere, and, 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 and people were happy, and, and you know what? I, I really, if you're free sometime, I'd love for you to join me. I'd like to. <laughs> it's as simple as that. It's as simple as telling somebody about the movie you saw this past week. It's as simple as telling a friend about that great restaurant you just went to. Or that activity you did. It's sharing the Holy Spirit and allowing the Spirit to work because you never know when the Spirit and the individual is ready to be caught on fire. You know, my friendship with Adam is a beautiful gift. And from his mother and now his, and her boyfriend and his, his wife, all their friends, I feel like I'm just such a part of a wonderful family that's not even mine, which is helpful they, for Facebook. That makes life a little easier. <laughs> But you know, I know that we were in the right place at the right time. And although we met when I probably was a little drunk, uh, <laughs> today we have a gift, and it's a challenge. And that's to leave here today drunk. <laughs> not, no, not drunk on alcohol. No, no, no. <laughs> Drunk with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is in you, and the Holy Spirit is guiding you. And so on this Pentecost, leave here. Rejoice. Spread the good news. And you might be shocked who gets touched.